Uh, how did you feel when you first heard the, the Donald Sterling phone conversation? I laughed, man. Uh, you know, I, I guess because I'm all, I don't, certain, a lot of shit don't bother me. Like, I wasn't all up in arms. I'm like, yo, this dude is 80 plus years old. 80 plus year old, white guy, billionaire. Of course he don't like niggas. You know what I'm saying? The first thing I said when I heard it, though, was, you know what? For him not to like black people, he's in the wrong business. So I was like, he can't be that racist. Real racism to me is like how Charles Barkley said, when you got a guy who's in a position of power who's like, no, we don't want no black people here, period. He, he blocking, us, blocking us from getting money and blocking us from positions. He don't want us working in their companies. That's real racism. For him to be employing all those black people and be in the NBA all those years, he hates us. He might hate us, but then he might just think we're good enough to work for him. But then also... As, as the story progressed, you asked me what happened when I, first, when I first heard it. That's how I felt. But as the story progressed, I'm just like, he's just a jealous dude. He's an 80-year-old man who don't want his black and Mexican woman fucking black guys. Number one, because his dick probably ain't as big as a black guy. And probably because he can't get hard no more. So he'd say, listen, he told the chick, you can fuck him, you can feed him. Just don't bring him to the games. That don't sound racist. If you if you don't if you telling your girl fuck a black guy, <laughs> feed the black guy. Just don't bring him to the games. That ain't all the way racist. Bro, you know what's more racist? His the housing discrimination that he was doing. You know that he got sued for. That's more racist than this this situation. I'm from the south, man. That good old boy. You know, old white guys of a certain age, not liking black thing is old, black people is old to me. I think I might have said it here on black TV or somewhere. I said. The, most, the people that are holding on to racism the most are old white people and all black people. <laughs> all, old white people and all black people. We, they not letting it go. No, the man is always going to be against us. The, the system is never going to be set up for us to win. And old white people, they're just going to look at us as niggas. Listen, go talk to an 80-year-old black guy. You know how he's going to talk about white people? Honky. He's going to talk like that. Because that's how he was raised. That's the system they come from. I, 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 I get it. I understand it. Like, it didn't, it, didn't, it didn't shock me. If he was younger, if he was 30. 20, 30, I'd be like, hey, what's, 40 even. I'd be like, what's wrong with you, dog? Like, you, you're, really, you're really still racist in 2014? He's 80 years old. He's about to die. And guess what? His old ideologies and old philosophies, philosophies and old ways of doing things are going to die with him. I don't give a shit. I really didn't give a shit. Uh, how do you feel, you know, in today's world? Think about all the, the ignorant conversations you've had with your friends on the phone mm -hmm. or in person. Mm -hmm. Think about if they took some of those. You're a little bit different, but, <laughs> but, just, but imagine some of the stuff you said that was really, really ignorant. That it's just you, you and your friends fucking around. Got blasted to the world. I don't talk like, I mean... I, truthfully, I really don't talk like that. Like the way I talk now is how I talk in general. Like that's I'm, what I'm saying. You're, you're a little bit different. Yeah, I'm not. I'm re I'm really not a prejudiced person. I don't not know why. I'm prejudiced against evil. Some Satan worshippers might hate me because I'll be like fuck Satan all day, and I'll be like Satan worshippers are dumb as shit. I don't know why the fuck you would worship the devil. I mean, you might hear some stuff like that, but other than that, nah. You might hear that same shit I say. I don't talk to niggas after five o'clock. That's the most thing. Black people probably might hate me a little bit more. Because I'd be like, man, fuck these niggas. The niggas is crazy. I stay away from niggas. You know what I'm saying? And I know they mad at me now because you white and I'm saying this on Vlad TV. But, it, but we all stay away from niggas. I got nigga phobia. Okay? I, I walk down the street and I see some niggas that look like Chief Keef. I'm going on the other side of the street. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Why am I, what, what neighborhood am I in that like, I'm crossing paths with niggas that look like Chief Keef? Like, I know how I used to be when I was that guy. Go look at my AV on Twitter and look at that little nigga with the afro in high school who thought he was fucking Meffin Man, Red Man, and fucking Snoop Dogg all rolled in one. Go look at that motherfucker. I know what was on his mind. So I know the mind of a nigga, okay? Niggas still exist within me, but it's like the Incredible Hulk existed, with, existed within Bruce Banner. I know how to contain it. So, yes, nigga phobia. But then again, this is what I would be saying to somebody on the phone. So I say it now. So I wouldn't give a fuck. You leak all my conversations. Well, you know, I, I interviewed Don Magic One. Mm -hmm. And he had a... Type of nigga that Donald Sterling would not want in his basketball game. Don Magic One. <laughs> yes. 
Well, he had actually had known V. Staviano for quite a while. There was actually pictures of her at his house, mm-hmm. the honeycomb hideout, mm-hmm. which he likes to call it, in her uh, negligee, mm-hmm. hanging out with uh, you know other celebrities, which mm-hmm. you know he chose to cover up. You know, so she had been a working girl. A, 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 you know, I think he called her like a a money girl. You know, for quite a while. Mm-hmm. You know, he said mm-hmm. he even brought uh, she even brought Donald Sterling to his house at one point. Mm-hmm. He just didn't know who who he was. Mm-hmm. What's your take on V. Saviano? She's a dumb hoe. And the reason I say she's a dumb hoe, because you're dating an 80-year-old billionaire. She probably don't even got to fuck the nigga because his dick don't get hard. That's number one. Number two, he told you that you can fuck and feed whoever you want. Just don't bring him to the games, and I'm still going to love you. Still going to trick off on you. His wife is suing the chick for $1.8 million that she say Donald Sterling spent on him. What more do you want? As a man that has a management firm called PPM, Proper Pussy Management, I try to teach girls how to properly manage their pussies and maximize the value of their pussies. Get the most value you can out of your vagina. That disgusts me. Because what can you, we can't, listen, there's no point in having a side chick. Because what can we do for our side chicks if Donald Sterling can't even keep his side chick under control and he doesn't spend $1.8 million on her and letting her do what the fuck she want to do? I'm letting you do whatever you want to do. You got four courtside tickets to the Clippers games. That shit wouldn't have meant nothing 10 years ago, but it means something now. They got Chris Paul, Blake Griffin. They balling. I buy you whatever you want. I buy you cars. I got you a crib. And I told you, you can go fuck and feed whatever black men you want. What more does... What this fuck this... What is her name? V. Staviano. V. Staviano, what more does she want, man? What more does she want? That is a side chick's dream. She came up. Every grimy ass side chick should slap the shit out of V. Stiviano when they see her in the street. All them hoes you see on Love and Hip Hop and Basketball Wives that's trying to come up off reality TV. This chick V. Stiviano ain't even on reality TV, but she getting all this bread. Y'all should slap the shit out of her when y'all see her in the street. She'll never, ever in her life find to come up better than Donald Sterling. That, that is true. Ever. Ever. She fucked it up. That's a dumb bitch. She fucked it up. Do you think that he should be forced to sell the Clippers? Yes. Absolutely, because it is codes of conduct in any business. And if you violate those codes of conduct, you got to go, period. You know, it's as simple as that. It happens in radio all the time. It happens in radio. It happens in, you know. Television. Television. It happens in law. It happens when you're a doctor, anywhere. You, you violate certain. Definitely codes. happens in politics. It happens in politics. You violate certain codes of conduct, you got to go. He's a hateful person. He's a racist. You can't be... Listen, you cannot be racist against black people when we make up more than 80% of the NBA. You, re- you really think you're going to be in business here, dog? <laughs> Bye. You got to go. That, listen, I said it. That's the only place you probably can shit on black people and they will get you the fuck up out of there is the NBA. You might can shit on black people in America and, and, and get away with it. You ain't doing that in the NBA. Mm-mm. Not when we make up 80% of the NBA. It's not happening. We the minority in America, but we the majority in the NBA.